powerful, imposing structures with an unpretentious and unapologetic aesthetic. Yet standing out for their bold individuality, Brutalist buildings are difficult to fall in love with at first sight. To think about brutalism is to think about concrete. The term originated from Beton Bru, French for raw concrete. It wasn't a movement exactly, but it was a term applied to the architectural style of exposed rough concrete and large modernist block forms, which started in the 1950s and flourished in the ensuing 20 years. It's a set of ideas that emerged after the Second World War. While people were suffering from poverty and the most of the edifices were destroyed, they started using concrete to build accommodation buildings, for it was the cheapest and the fastest way. The first brutalist building was Leo Boussier's Unité de Habitation, which is a huge concrete frame, concrete facet, concrete structure. It has law is, which are columns, which lift the whole structure of the ground and it has an amazing sculptural roof. It's mainly flats, but with cafes and a school for residents. It's not a pretty building, but it's an incredibly simple, powerful image anyone can draw. Architecture is about establishing moving relationship with raw material. In other words, brutalism is supposed to make you feel something. One of the most important people to write about brutalism is Reina Banner. He got that brutalism was all about feeling. He wrote a long polemical essay in 1955 on the topic called The New Brutalism in the influential magazine The Architectural Review. His essay says three things. First of all, it's all about memorability as an image. Second, there's a clear exhibition of structure. And third, he writes that there is a valuation of material as found. You instantly get what a brutalism building looks like. You can see how it's made and you can see what it's made of. Of these things added up to a kind of architecture which is really about feeling. It's about creating a felt impression. But most people today call it that it is ugly. Another form of art says otherwise, based on several films that incorporated brutalist architecture in its setting. The characterizations of buildings in concrete and metal form emphasizes on futurism and perception of authorities. Hoover FBI building city halls in Boston and Dallas, which featured in Robocop, being a few prime examples of administration buildings that infuses brutalist architecture that may easily conjure a sense of governance. It invokes the monotonous and melancholic impressions which express how the characters in each film feels, trapped, and we feel the same way. The settings bring the audiences to capture the sense of agitation and exhaustion due to its repetitious tone in every single inch of most of the brutalist structure. A clockwork orange which uses the South Mayor estate in Dames Med, Robocop, that includes City Hall, Minority Report and of course Blade Runner in 2049. They all share one common underlying theme besides brutalist architecture. It is the act of brutalism itself. This film does not only serve incredible visual details, but also the truth behind them. It is the idea of brutalism, making the raw material that was usually hidden beneath the surface as a true protagonist, embracing the sculptural qualities and epitomizes monumentally while achieving formalism. The idea of it is what it is in brutalist architecture that makes it very factual while subtly forceful in films. As for me, I've been interested in architecture as long as I can remember, and the main reason for this is brutalism. Tbilisi, where I live with its Soviet heritage, is one of the best sites for this kind of architecture. Some of the buildings that caused my love for this architectural style are Tbilisi Skybridge, Chronicle of Georgia, 19th century women's gymnasium in Solage, former palace in Rich Walls, the Bank of Georgia headquarters, Bath Relief, and many more.